Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I'm going to be with you throughout the championship. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. This one is going to be all about the England team that I expect to be selected against Wales this coming Saturday in one of the greatest fixtures in world rugby. Huge, huge tradition in this one. Just a quick review of what happened against Italy for England. Um, I was in the minority, I think, where I was quite enthused by at least the intention of England to go out and play a lot more attacking rugby and be super aggressive on defence. They didn't get anything, everything right, far from it. But it seems like a new dawn in terms of how they're trying to play. So I personally loved it. Elko and I went into great depth in it. Uh, and you can see that in this video up there. I'll link it now. Go and check that one out if you want to see what we made of the game as a whole. You know, but England had a fair bit of disruption in that week as well with injuries to their halfbacks, Marcus Smith and Alex Mitchell at times during the week being unavailable. So it was, um, I think it was a creditable performance for a new team at the start of a championship. Now then, let's go into who I expect to, uh, oh, no, first we'll do squad updates. So it looks like Ellis Genge is going to be fit. He's been training uh, fully. Um, Oscar Beard has returned to the squad. Sadly, o Ollie Lawrence has not as yet. It's looking like he might be back training with the squad by the end of this week and may be available for Scotland. Uh, and the same with George Martin, who is already back training, but not available this week. Marcus Smith, another one who are uh, not quite sure still at the moment, certainly not going to be available for this week. Okay, looking at the forwards. So these are the players that I think are nailed on to keep their shirt from last week. So this is what I got. Jamie George, skipper, had a very solid game. Maritoji, who on first glance, I thought had a relatively quiet game for him, but apparently he hit... 33 attacking rucks, which was um, right up there with the top from this weekend. Slowed down three defensive rucks as well, which was a, a, a high for the championship at the weekend too. So along with one turnover, Itoji doing a lot of dark work there, which um, is very important to how a team plays. Oli Chesham, I thought I had a very solid game. Line out went well, including some steals. And Ethan Roots was obviously man of the match. So. Um, in terms of the players that I haven't put in there, Joe Marlow, I thought, scrummed really well, but it was fairly static with his attacking ball carries. So maybe if Genji's fit, England might want to go with more dynamism from the start. On the tight head, I rate Will Stewart as a ball carrier, um, but he didn't have his best game for that. He, he got a ball ripped up away from him, didn't make huge yards when he did have it. Um, scrum. Well, he barely had a scrum, I don't think, when he was on the pitch. There was there was very few, so hard to judge there. And then just in the back row at seven and eight, Underhill and Earl, I think both had very solid games without being outstanding. They've had outstanding games for England in the past. This wasn't that. And then when Cunningham South came on, it just changed the balance a little bit, looked a little bit more pacey, if anything, in some ways. Um, so I wonder whether there's a, a selection decision to be made there as well. What do I think? This is what I think. I think he's going to go exactly the same. I think he's going to double down, give this side, uh, this forward pack, another chance to play well together, to bed in. And I just think it's the most solid starting eight that England could put out. Um, I like the balance of it. I don't think there's a problem there. And yeah, I think he's going to he's going to crack on with what they had before. Into the backs. And as mentioned, I really enjoyed, <clears throat> excuse me, I really enjoyed England's attack and ambition. Not all the detail was there. They didn't get everything right, but I thought it was a very good performance. So the players, I think, are nailed on to keep their shirts. Mitchell and Ford, I thought, went really well. Um, Slade, I think, is the, you know, the linchpin of that defensive system. I think he has to keep his, his slot and it shows some great attacking play as well. Tommy Freeman was probably England's back up, best back on the day, roaming around the field, looking powerful, looking incisive, but also creative. Like he just seems to, to hit holes, or seems to, he chooses to. Um, question marks, possibly over daily on the left wing. 
Um, I'm a fan of Daly on the wing. He provides, obviously, excellent kicking, excellent kick chase. But he's always been really fast. And I'm not sure whether it was just against Panny, who might be grease lightning, but he didn't look as quick on Saturday, I didn't think. Um, finished the try perfectly well. But there's possibly, you know, a, a, an option that he won't start. And then at fullback, again, Freddie Stewart, I thought, with with the limitations that we all know has got on his game in terms of pace, um, he did. I thought he had a really solid game, made some good tackles, uh, carried the ball well, and was the guy who made the critical pass to Tommy Freeman, which created the try for Daly. So that's something we haven't seen too much of from Stewart being that link man. So that was impressive to see that from him. And obviously he was, I think, 100% in the air, um, as he usually is. But if you wanted a change there, if you wanted somebody that's maybe a bit of more of an all-rounder, a bit more of a ball player, then you'd obviously look at George Furbank, who's been playing really well this season. What do I think? I think he's going to double down again. I think he's going to go with exactly the same start in 15. I think these things, they need time to settle down. The people need time to play with each other. And if it was good enough for last week, and I believe it was, then I don't see any reason to change it for this week. Certainly no big changes. You know, nobody came off the bench and really changed the game. So, yeah, I think he's going to go same time. Let's take a look at the bench where we've got a couple of changes here. So I think Beno Urbano, sadly, it didn't like he looked physical when he came off the bench, but he gave away a scrum penalty when England were press, pressurizing towards the end. So I think Genge would have been ahead last week. And if he's fit, he'll come back in on the loose head uh, reserve side. I think there's maybe a question mark about Dan Cole being selected here as well. Not his finest 25 minutes in an England shirt. Conceded a penalty against Spagnolo in Spagnolo's first ever scrum in Test Rugby. And I'd probably put him at fault for the final try as well. His inability to fold around that last ruck, something that Dingwall noticed as he was running across. It meant that Cunningham South and Roots had to pinch in and then go back out again. So stress the defence. And as Dingwall came around, you know, it's him that missed that final tackle. But he ran so far, pointed at an error, defensive error on the way. And then, you know, he just ran himself into a hole. So I don't really blame him for that. So Cole, maybe there's an argument to um, give Hayes a chance off the bench. I suspect the set piece won't be uh, too tough by that stage based on who Wales have got uh, coming off the bench. So maybe Hayes with his greater fitness, the great, the, you know, he's played more minutes recently as well. He's definitely got more match fitness and he's more dynamic off the bench. However, I think... I think they're going to go with Cole because I think they were going to want to get more minutes into his legs for potentially the harder set piece challenges that are going to come later in the tournament. Um, and again, I think, yeah, I don't think there's any reason to change any more of these people on the bench. I think Faye Waboso will do a great job if he comes on late in the game, along with all the other players there, you know, adding dynamism um, to, to the end, towards the end of the game. Yeah, so that's what I think. I think England are going to just pretty much, apart from Genge coming back in due to uh, following injury, I think they're going to go same, same. And I expect England to just, again, not just double down on selection. I expect them to double down on the tactics that they're trying to uh, get into the game this coming weekend. I expect them to be more linked up, more cohesive in their attacking play. And I expect them to trust the defensive systems that, uh, they're putting in place more this weekend as well. What do you think? Do you think this is the England team that Steve Borthwick's going to select? Do you think this team is good enough to beat Wales at Twickenham on Saturday? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind and you can, uh, you can hit subscribe there, you can watch that one next and don't forget to get out and play.